This week, I have the pleasure of bringing somebody on the series who, when I actually started in the business and got licensed, he was already seeing tremendous amounts of success um, in the mortgage industry. Mike Simbala, I appreciate you coming on the show today, man. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, an honor to be here. Uh, like you said, when when it was 2018, I think you ended up uh, plunge, plunging into actually being licensed. That's, at when, that I got, point. that's when I got licensed. Right, right. right? Yeah. And then uh, from then on out, uh, you never look back. And look, I mean, impressive stuff. No, I appreciate you know. it, man. Proud no, of you, dude. Th- n- never, never look back is a good way to... To look at this business, I guess when you want to be successful, there was no other option but to not look back. Of course. You know, I got in the business much. Even if interest rates are in the sevens. That's it. No don't, matter, no matter what look, the rates don't are. Don't look back to the threes. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. It's That's unrealistic. It. That's don't it. do it. It's unrealistic. It. Yep. You never know, man, but we'd like to say it's unrealistic. Unrealistic now. Yeah. Unrealistic now. You never, you never know what this world brings. To, so many crazy things have happened these Absolutely. last few years. but. I appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Like I said, when I, yeah, you know, of course. I, I got in the business, thanks for having me. Yeah, much. I got in the business much earlier before before I met you. But when I actually got licensed in right. 2018, and we were at a place, Meadowbrook Financial, I remember seeing the guy in the corner office in the front. I was on the sales floor. I saw you in the corner office, and I always knew something was going on in there. I knew that guy was successful, and um, you know that's somebody who I wanted to. You know, I, I, I looked up to you, you know, be, being Thank in the you. business. Appreciate that. You dude. know, starting as a young guy and, um, you know, we didn't become close right away. I, I, you were in and out. You do a lot we of... We were ne- also at opposite sides of the office, too. Opposite it sides. was like yeah, yeah. complete opposites, you yeah, know? No, 100, I was in one corner and you were in the exact <laughs> yeah, other yeah, corner yeah. diagonal. Complete. So complete complete so. opposite. But yeah, it's been a... Listen, it's been a good journey since we met and look what we're doing now. That's you know, it, man. Look, collaborating. It's nice to bring people together in our business and, and do stuff like this. And fast forward however many years later from 2018, um, being at a different company at the same company now, mm. um, you know, it's nice to be in the in the day-to-day operation of working with you al- alongside us. Yeah, and- ab- absolutely. I think uh, it's definitely great just to have not only people that you work with to where you can relate, right? You can have a vibe like personally and also professionally. Exactly. And to be able to bounce back ideas, strategies. Exactly. You know, it's great. I mean, and we even we even talk about, you know, investing, what's the next step, what's the next rental. Yeah. So it's great to have those conversations with just a young guy who is not scared to work hard. Because that's what our business is about. Working hard. Right? The hard work always pays off. Hard work always pays off. Hard work pays off, you know, becoming smarter during times like this you know, in, in, in this rate environment and in the, I guess, way the industry's been for us, you have to dig a little deeper, you know, nowadays. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, it's even though it's became more challenging, I, I love times like this. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I love absolutely. times like this. Yeah. And it's interesting because everyone's always so focused on making money, right? Because that's the end all goal, right? We're in sales. Right. There's no guaranteed check. Yep. So you work and you produce and you eat what you kill. And... If you're not bringing in money, then you have a problem when it comes to your work ethic, right? Your sales ability, right? right? So you got you to gotta figure out what the issue is in order to become successful. And I think, I think as far as the best, the best thing that I've learned from a mentor was I used to focus on the money. And one of the things that he shared with me is don't focus on the money. Stop doing the math with if you make this and you close this amount of loans and this. Go and focus on units. Right. If you focus on just getting more loans right. and don't don't focus on the volume, how much you get paid per deal. Just focus on getting the next deal, the next unit. And then he's like, I guarantee you, Michael, if you do that, the money comes. 100%. It follows. So that was, 100%. you know, that that's, uh, that's something to where in any market, right? Yeah a COVID market to where our business is thriving or a market right now to where guys are leaving the business. Exactly. We know people who have gotten guys that were su- jobs. And guys that were successful in the business. And like I said before, I look at it as, as an opportunity, as a window, you know, for us to dig deeper and obviously set up a time where yeah. we know in the future is going to be um, an opportunity for us to be successful. Sure, you know, sure. Extremely successful. Absolutely. And wow. I think it shows it just if you look at – what I do as far as when it comes to the social media presence and what you do. But that's I mean, kind of how we click because we, we kind of had two different models. You know, 
we've always been my system more of a lead model. Right. Um, you know, we've always done referral business as far as like originating and working and with the realtors. Platform. Yeah, we've right. always done stuff like that. But our main platform was a lead origination model. Right. And, Correct. You know, you came from a different background, and I always wanted to dive into that world of more networking and meeting with people. And that's you know why I looked up to you when I met you because I saw you did all that stuff and to now be myself and be involved in that um, and to do both sides of the business. Um, you know, that's, I think, what most people should try to do because I, right. I feel like in times like this, people that are waiting for that phone to ring from the realtors when 85, I forget what the stat is, 85% of realtors that got their license in the last year or two, like leave the business or something like that, some crazy stat. Yeah. Um, again, it's a good time to align yourself with the right people. So, Absolutely. You know, it's a, g a good time for people that have a model to try different things. And, you know, when things get busy again, um, and rates come down or there's an influx of business, you know, we're going to be ready to, to rock and roll. Absolutely. That's exciting. Absolutely. It's exciting it's, stuff. You know, the, it's, there's, there's so many different cliche sayings, but the reason why they're cliches is because they're spot on and they're right. <coughs> right. So it's right. like, you know, the cream will rise to the top. The That's strong, it. the strong survive. Right. At the end of the day, right now you see people like you and I right. are blessed to be in a position to where because we, put the we work still yeah. earn a great living, okay? Now, did we earn more <laughs> at a different time? We're not gonna lie, absolutely. Of course. Absolutely, we did, but the difference is, when you look at just where you're at, your lifestyle, you know, you don't wanna push it too much, but you wanna stay within a comfort zone to where you know that if our business goes up, down, up, down, a mini roller coaster, and sometimes that roller coaster gets, you know, mini to, real real big so at that point i think it's just it, it it's just good to have a business model to where you have that balance of you have to have a balance correct exactly. to where you're networking you're out there and you're in the business of relationships right and then to have a lead gen platform which i just recently started yeah. getting involved in because i haven't i haven't been using leads since i don't know <laughs> Come on, maybe you started. You started by dialing. Maybe, the Everybody maybe, starts by dialing. Maybe 2013. Yeah, the I started in college. Yeah, that's it. That's started what, in college. You know, we, we were going to go through a couple of different questions. I wanted sure, to ask sure, you. Sure, sure. Yeah, and hit me with it. The first one was actually how you got into the business. Okay, how, so how you became a loan officer. So this is a good one. I love telling this one. So, um, I'm a kid in school. I'm in college, right? So now it's I graduated high school in 2004. Now, what was happening in 2004? You had what's called the subprime market. Yeah. Okay. So this is where you had loans before the regulators. They lent money to everybody. It was anybody and anybody. You had these ridiculous loans. You know, many people should not have been receiving the loans that they got. But those were the old times. And you know what? The banks and the government allowed it. So, right. you know, you really can't knock the mortgage banker or broker for no. taking for taking advantage of it. But you're helping somebody accomplish what they want to accomplish. Correct. But correct. And and now right. if you as the lending institution or the government give the tools and we take advantage of it. You know, that's really not our fault, but that's another conversation for right. a different podcast. Right. So, so as far as um, a kid in school, I see all these guys that I went to high school with, older kids, loan officers now, making all this money, the cool cars, buying houses, 24 years old, 25, I'm um, 17, 18. Right. So I go, I'm, uh, I'm going to school, and then uh, I start off selling laser levels, little monkeys, elephants, and... Nemo fish wow. that were three dollars, and you clicked the I, and it would switch to the next radio station, but you didn't <laughs> know what it was. So um, I got I got involved in sales when I was when I was actually working on my off days, and I was going and walking into Hempstead Turnpike, Old Country Road, Sunrise Highway, Merrick Road, and we'd have territories. And I was eighteen, and I was walking in with these wholesale items and saying, I have items 80% off. I don't know if you could use it, but it's a great deal. So you had plenty of people who said, get the fuck out of here, kid. Uh, can't you read the sign? No soliciting. Yeah. But they actually taught us, and that's what helped me conquer the fear. They taught us, when it says no soliciting, you walk in there, no matter what. Yeah, teach you let how to them, o overcome. Let them tell you to leave, because you know what? <laughs> The average sales guy doesn't walk in there. Correct. You're not average. You go and you walk in there. So I'd walk in there and you know what the That's most- That's how you learn. That's such a young age. And you know what you the most- a, You don't give a shit. No. Nah, and you know what the most amount of sales I got? 
was from the no soliciting signs because guys weren't guys just naturally were just scared. So yeah. that kind of like taught me like how you're not going to get every deal and how to deal with rejection. Yep. Because in any aspect of sales, I don't care if you're Tony Robbins, shout out Tony. Uh, so Tony Robbins to Gary V. doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Everyone has been rejected. How you deal with rejection. Everyone has been rejected, yeah. right? And it's it's just all about just keep going. That's it. Just keep going. That's keep it. going. You know, just like in golf. Golf is not a game. Of well, perfect. you can say that because yeah, you worked Onto hard and shot. you got right. You got incredibly good to where it's like unfair to play with you. However, however, um, still you should work hard at the sport, <laughs> no matter how good you are. Oh man. But yeah, so 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 as far as I I got into it just to um. Just to get back into a loan officer or uh, you aspiring. Did you stop by dialing aspiring. the phone, or how'd you? Get, what did you stop by doing when you? So got yeah, into so bed? I started by dialing. Once I ended up walking into another office, and it was ninety eight <coughs> degrees, and I was sweating, <laughs> and it was three p.m. and it and and I was nineteen, and I'm like, oh. So I used to get pitched by a lot of different places. So I had a stack of business cards. And I had so many people like, kid, you're in the wrong business. Kid, you're in the wrong business. You know, getting me into, you know, insurance, this, that, whatever. And I remember a recruiter. I walked into USA Mortgage Bankers. And um, I, used to, I used to have a lot of mortgage guys tell me, you got to do this, I'm telling you. And then a guy went and he sold me like no other. No other. <laughs> the so, best salesman gets sold. It's no, the, you're right. You're always. right. So then, so then I ended up uh, just... Um, being tired of it yeah. on that day, at 98 degree day, I went through those cards. I found that recruiter. I called him up and he said, come in next week on Monday. So I came in, I got interviewed, I got hired on the spot. Like they hired everyone on the spot who was willing to do it <laughs> back then. And then I was 19 and I started dialing the phones and making approximately 200 to, 200 to 300 calls a day. Um, awesome. Yeah, and, uh, but at least I was in an office and not uh, hitting hitting the concrete anymore, yeah, but no, that's that's actually how I started in the business. Similar to how I started around yeah nineteen. Uh -huh. I, I tried college for a year, then you know around nineteen twenty, I got into the business and started pounding the phones. Sure. That's, that's the only way I feel like most people knew back then there was networking and stuff and yeah. meeting people and getting out there. But I feel like the old school way of just hitting the phones and getting business yeah, that yeah, way absolutely. was how. A lot of the successful people have learned. You know what's that? Um, you know what's actually. You have to have that quality. Yeah. You know when you. Yeah. You know something that's actually pretty cool and that I definitely admire about you. So your dad is in the business, but his direction in the business is on a very successful business model. Yeah. You know, like I have a different successful business model. You do others, right? Yeah. And what's great is you get into the business now at such a young age, and you've developed your own business model to where like a lot of individuals like you know if their dad's in a, a cpa they became they become a cpa right. and it's just the normal routine of things but it's but it's very interesting how your dad went his way to become real successful and you're going your way to become real successful so yeah listen. pretty uh pretty interesting and cool stuff I, I guess it shows you know the last name is pretty talented so yeah I don't know, man. <laughs> Listen, I feel like any, no matter who you are, once you find what direction, I guess you feel like you're supposed to go in, it's how do you take that to the to the to the top? You know, yep. the sky's the limit. Once you figure out, you know, what can I do to become successful? Yep. If I'm gonna do this every day and put the amount of time that we put in, you know, in this business, and, yeah. You know, I eat, sleep, and breathe this business. You know, until I get to where I want to be, where I'm not now, um, I'll do whatever it takes, and you know, I'll keep changing and. You know, with the times, just like with the social media, you know, stuff nowadays, um, that's something else I really wanted to talk to you about. Absolutely. Um, I know you became popular on social media. Um, you put a lot of great content out there. Um, you know, ha something I wanted to ask you. Yeah, is great. Some, some, you, sometimes to me, a little embarrassing, but uh, yeah. How do you? I'll take, I'll take the compliment. Thank no, you. Because you take, you take, you get a lot of stuff out there. So how do you not let that take away from your business? Um, how do you? manage all of that content to be able to put it out there and um not let it take away from you know what we do because what we do is so time consuming you're right Ab absolutely like you said our, our our business never stops and listen we chose our business right you and i know this right now when we go on vacation it is never a real vacation no 
It is never a real day. You can't go away in our business and not answer your phone. No. You will lose deals. You will lose yep. business or contacts. Um, you know, it's great. It's great when you get the whole like, hey, Mike, I didn't want to bother you, but then they bother me. You don't right? answer but, five minutes. They'll call a different <laughs> lender. <laughs> I right. don't care if it's five right. minutes. So, so it's kind of like, you know, we chose, we chose that business, you know. So, uh, but l listen, it comes with a lot of rewards when you work hard, right? We have the ability to, um, you know, golf when we want to. We have the flexibility to where we can go, leave early, spend time with our families, you know. But um, but uh, as 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 far as the social media, it's it's all about a structure. Yeah, you got to have a structure. Yeah. You got to have a game plan. Well, you're very structured. I see you shoot your stuff, and then it's all done in advance. Yeah, you know, one very, day, yeah. one day, I generally shoot for about four or five hours. Okay, I do a, a wardrobe change, so I'll bring another suit. So it doesn't take you away. know, and you know what I've been doing, and I actually learned this the hard way. So my, my real like dances to where like I'm copying something that, that was like trendy or I'm really busting out like a Michael Jackson to this and the moonwalk. Like you might have those. to bust something out before we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So audience. so yeah. as far as like, we'll get there. But, uh, but as far as I've learned that the ones to where I'm breaking a sweat, now I save them at the end before the, ward <laughs> before the wardrobe change. So I found that out the hard way. Right. But uh but yeah, yeah it's you're just very structured. again, that's it. Structure, you're right. That's it. Like Structure and coming up with a system, so. All right. No, that's that's good stuff, man. It's nice to see that you've really taken that to the next level compared to what a lot Got to of embrace it. I mean, compli to compliance took 3 months. Yeah, well, but. listen, that's something unfortunately <laughs> in New York state where where we yep. are in regards to posting stuff, they they really, you know, make us go through the ringer when Absolutely. It comes to getting the stuff yep. out there, but it's to protect us. So we post good. and we do it the right way. That's it. Do it That's the right it. way. Something else I wanted to speak about because I feel like you are so knowledgeable now on some of the trends and some of the stuff that actually generates business from social media. You know, what are some tips, you know, that you would give to get started? You know, is it just getting started or, you know, what are some tips you would give to other people in our industry that, you know, might not have made the the move yet to get out there on social media no matter what age you are i feel i personally before mm. you know you speak i feel like nowadays it's so important to have a brand and no matter what age group it is or what target market you have i feel like that person because i know i would do it they type your name in if after they speak to you mm. whether it's a referral partner a client somebody you're doing business with um they're going to look you up on on social media sure you know so what are some tips you would give to somebody looking to get started that might not have done so already in our so, business? So when you're getting started in social media, um, it's important, right, to find out your target audience, right? Right, Your target audience, then unpeel the onion and dive a little deeper and then find out what entertains your target audience, right? right? What are you doing to be entertaining and engaging? And I would say the best thing would be find your gimmick. Find your gimmick. You know, my gimmick is dancing. You know, God bless me. I got a nice little talent. So I use it, you know. So it's 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 just a matter of just find your gimmick and yeah. find what's you. If you try and be somebody else, it's not going to come across genuine, authentic. So I would just say as far as find your target, your target audience, number one. Number two, find if you can have a gimmick, right. you know. And then number three, consistency. You got to keep going. I don't care if you get 12 views, you know, after three months of posting, keep going. Yep. Because eventually, when you keep figuring it out and you keep learning, eventually it pops. One million percent. You know, and you either go viral, whether it goes from having your average views of 800 to 1,200 to 12,000 to 30,000, you know, or or you end up getting to some real-time big, uh, big time success. Like the gentleman in the back over there. <laughs> yeah. And that's a shout out to the Journey Podcast. You know, I just, it's, it's something I wanted to speak about, actually, what you just said, you know, views. Because I feel like a lot of people, you know, when I, my question was, is what tips would you give for people that haven't been on social media? Mm -hmm. You know, how could they get started? I feel like people that aren't in our, not really, I wouldn't say our generation, um, but people that might not be so educated on media and social media, you know, view, why are views important? You know, mm -hmm. who cares about views? I know for, from my experience um, and from just being, I guess, educated on 
some of the social media stuff we've been doing, the reason we focus on how many views we can get is because we're trying to build a brand, right? So once we build a brand and we get out there and people know who we are, it's a numbers game, just like with leads, with referrals, with anything in our business. The more people that see us, whether they buy a house in three months, in six months, in two years, or refinance a house in three months, six months, two years, and we're in their face time and time and time again, it just it, it boosts up the conversion ratio, I feel like, of them knowing that Mike does mortgages or Dean does mortgages. So at some point in their lifetime, you know, even if it's not them, they'll recommend you to somebody. Just by being out there and getting your views up, I feel like it just sets up opportunity for now and in the future. Absolutely. Because you're in people's faces. I get random messages from people in different states that I think it's a fake account, but then I actually start communicating with the person and it's a real estate investor in Oklahoma looking to do, you know, fix and flip loans or a debt service mm -hmm. loan on an investment right. property. And, you know, I, by posting videos and getting out there and, and doing some ads and stuff like that and getting the views up, that puts me in front of people and gives us an opportunity, you know, to generate business. So absolutely. Yeah. That's why I feel like views are important. You know, people always say, you know, why do you care about the views? To me, it's money. You know, the more views I get, the more opportunity I'm going to have in the future or now, whenever that person viewing it needs me or my services, you know, or somebody they know does. Sure. You know, so that's why I think it's very important to, especially because we do this stuff, you know, how do we become the best at it? How do we get out there as much as possible? You know, so it's something that you've become successful at. You know, I know we're all trying to become better at it. Um, you know, I've started to get out there more and, you know, seeing people not do it in this business, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be a challenge for you to become successful and be successful, sure. especially You're in right. a challenging market. Because when somebody sees somebody like you or myself or the other people that are out there, and their reputation in the business because we're out there, we're gonna get the business. You know, that's just kinda of how it works. Dean, you put opinion. it you you put it so direct. Yeah. And uh like just just to really just to really let people know how this really works and what the future is going to bring. And we see it because we live it. Right. Right? We're at that age. And I hated where, social media my whole life. I never liked. Social I was never media. big into it. Yeah, I was neither. never big into it. Never it liked took, being on it. It actually took breaking up uh, a breakup when I was like 25 and broke up with um, with an ex after like three years. And she was 29 and she was on Facebook. Yeah. And then we broke up and I'm like, well, I'm gonna join Facebook. So <laughs> it actually it actually took a breakup to have me go and actually start Facebook. And I'll tell you what, when it comes down to it, how old is your dad? 60 he'll be 62 okay in november all right so my dad's gonna be he can 60. now qualify for a, re a, re a reverse <laughs> mortgage what a plug he <laughs> would be he'd be so proud he'd be so proud that you did that oh, so man. so um as far as when it comes down to it right 62 my dad's 67 which also qualifies for you to where if you defer social security you're going to get an increase <laughs> at the age of 67 that's a fact yeah um so so as far as when it comes down to our parents, right? Yeah. The generation. Think about it like when our parents purchased a house, okay? Way back when, which was a long time ago, yeah. dad. Um, so as far as when that took place, our parents got their mortgage guy, their realtor, their attorney. They all got it from their parents for the most part. Right. Now, it may be from a relative or this or that, but, it, but the majority of the people get the individual from a loved one, right. right? That's just how it works. Now, what's happening with the generation as we speak, everyone who's a teenager, everyone in their 20s, that's the future that's gonna be buying houses Correct. within the next five to 10 years. When mom and dad gives them now their contact, the first thing that that kid or adult at, at the time is gonna do is look you up on social media. If you're not relevant on social media, they're going to think, who the hell is this guy that mom gave me? And then they're going to go and they're going to talk to someone else until they find someone who's relevant. So now when you get referred now more in the future, because we see it, that is going to be one of the number one things. Like people go on Google. We want to go and look up a restaurant, 
how great something is, how far something, we go on Google. Now, when you get referred and recommended, a lot of people are gonna be going to your social media platform. Exactly. And if you don't have a platform and you're not with it, then most likely they won't be with it. Thank so you. you hit it right, right on the button, 1 million percent. If you're not out there, especially with this upcoming generation of people looking to buy homes right. or that are gonna buy homes in the next five to 10 years, like you said, you know, you're probably not going to get the business. Right. So you're not going to be there. You're going to be. No. So I, so I understand if you're, if you're in your fifties and your sixties and retirement is in the near future, I get the whole not building your social media presence because you're going to be left in the dust. And the truth is you're going to be left in the dust to guys like me and you. Yeah. And that's exactly how it's going to play out. That's so, put the work so in. you and you, you, myself, and a lot of other business professionals who are who are embracing this, this is something that just needs to be done for your business as now it's a necessity. Exactly. 100%. It's, it's, it's no longer a choice, you know? What's your favorite platform? What do you think for our business? Um, what's your favorite platform, and what do you think is the best platform in our industry to generate business on? Well, I'll what, tell you, my opinion? favorite is where... Uh, I get the most amount of views, uh, of course. Uh, like like you stated earlier, yeah. viewership is number one to me yeah. as well. Um, but to me, Instagram, okay. Instagram, I, I I really just get you know I do my seven to eight of educational, seven to eight of entertaining monthly, and uh, I just kind of keep it up. And Instagram is where I get the most amount of feedback. Facebook, LinkedIn, as well as TikTok. I like LinkedIn. So, I feel like people forget LinkedIn. You know, I used LinkedIn going back several years now for creating appointments. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like people are always trying to connect, 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 connect with you. And um, you get so many messages and I never looked at my messages until one, one day I was like, you know what, let me, let me dig through here. And there were so many people that might not be sending me a deal, but the whole point of our business is to connect with people who have loans and try to build relationships with them. And when I saw the opportunity with, accountants and real estate agents and financial planners and people that I can connect with right there. LinkedIn, you know, set up a lot of opportunity. You know, I've, I've had some success with LinkedIn. So it's great. I, yeah, I feel like LinkedIn, LinkedIn is definitely you have to use great. it a different Correct. way. But. You have to use it. And there's also a few different ways to use LinkedIn. There's a LinkedIn yeah. premium, you know, to where you can pay a little bit extra. But if you really dive in, I, I know a lot of people who crush it on LinkedIn. And again, a lot about, of appointments, just a yeah, lot of setting up appointments, setting up appointments, connect it, yeah. connecting with people. Yeah. Some people use it for target marketing, but yeah. it's good just to keep your brand out there and stay away from out of sight, out of mind, because now it's it would it would actually be interesting and we should actually look this up. What What is the actual number based off of your particular industry, right? And this is probably real hard to gauge, but what is the what is the percentage of business that actually comes directly from a LinkedIn, a TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook platform, you know? And then a lot of it is gonna be gauged towards like, what's your target audience, right? right. Because now if you wanna reach out to 40 and older, I could tell you, listen, I'm blessed to where I got a lot of friends, a lot of different ages, you know, I'm golfing with friends who are 68 years old. I'll golf with friends who are 24, yeah. you know? So, so it's like now, if you want to reach a target audience, I'll tell you right off the bat, my friends and your friends and everybody's friends who are 40 and older, 45 and older, Facebook, the majority of them, Facebook is still their platform. Even, even when you get into like fifties or sixties, a lot of them are, are with Facebook. Yeah. And now when you're getting to that under 40, I feel like it's Instagram. Instagram. Instagram is where it's at. I think our age group is just all IG, IG. I agree. And then yeah. when you get to the younger years to where I'd say the majority. Um, TikTok. Now, tick, 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 tock. TikTok. 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 Yeah. It's, I think that's what you were going to say. TikTok. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I mean, TikTok is just. The younger, the younger generation fell and in those love. Those people are going to buy homes. Yeah, you know, in the next five or ten years. Yep. You know, yep. those millennials. So, uh, so. so yeah, it's just being being out there. You got to be on all platforms. And uh, listen, uh, it's 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 not about who you know. It's not about what you know. It's who knows you. Right. That's what it comes down to. Yep. I don't I don't have to know them, but if people are talking about me, and that person talks well and highly about me, or you. And we get a call from that. It's all about who knows you. So 
viewership again. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> you love dancing on social media. You know, so what's some advice you would give some people who can't dance like you to get out there? I mean, we just talked about this. You have to just really just get out there and start yep. doing it today. There's no time to wait. Yeah. Um, it's so important for the future, like we just said. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's some other advice you would give people? Just find kind of what you like doing. Is there, you know, like you like dancing on social media. You know, some guys like just doing educational stuff. I feel like you spin it both ways. You do some funny stuff. You do some educational stuff. Um, what's some advice you would give to somebody that, because I feel like a lot of the people I talk to, they just say, Dean, I, you know, I don't know what I should do. I don't know how I can be my myself on mm -hmm. social media. You know, what, what do I do to get out there? I think it starts with everything's going to be related to your personality. You, you know, earlier I, I spoke about find your gimmick, but uh, you got to be authentic with your gimmick, you know? So I would... I would kind of just, I would just kind of really focus on finding your personality because if you're not an upbeat and not an energetic hype person, you can't pretend to be on right. social media. You know, not only, not only does someone who doesn't even know you see right through it, but your friends and your family also know that's not you. So you got to find your personality, find what's you, you know, find what makes you comfortable. Yeah, and then, that. and then you got to find out what makes it engaging. That's a good way to put it. You know, find who you are and then how do you engage with yep. the most of your personality, yeah, you know, like your person, you, uh, like your personality and my personality, we have similarities. And I never thought I had, I don't, I'm always, I'm very reserved and laid back sure. and to actually get on the camera and get out there. It's, you know, it's not the same as speaking. I'll speak in front of a room. No, you, know, you over, reserved, you know, you but, reserved. Yeah. Hey, listen, the cat being on camera is something that was different for me, but hundred percent as you become more comfortable, it's something that we have to do. Like you're you right. Said, so, yeah. I feel like there's been some other talk lately. There's something new going around social media, you know, something called threads. I think it's Twitter's new competitor. Mm -hmm. um, are you on threads? You know what? I'm, I'm on, I'm on Twitter, but that is the, uh, that is definitely the platform to where um, I could give myself a failing grade at. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really involved with that. I go Me neither. On, I never. I go on not yeah. often, so you know, I'm. I'm not educated enough in it to really be talking about it. Well, listen, I appreciate that. You know, I'm not. You know, it's Twitter. I feel like I was on it years ago when I was in high school. I never looked at Twitter as yeah. being something that would give me an opportunity to connect with sure, people. Sure, sure. I'll tell you what, business. actually. Um, I don't know if I there's mean, any messaging and stuff on I Twitter. Mean, if I never you want to, if if you want to go with comparisons. Um, I could tell you, like, if we're going to see how much I'm on Twitter, I could tell you Trump is on Twitter more than me. <laughs> yeah, he definitely I, is. So. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> um, something else I wanted to talk. I want your opinion on something. Shoot. I know the, the it's been a big hype the last couple of weeks about this big fight that's coming up between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> I I know Mark Zuckerberg. He owns Facebook. I've seen him you know, on social media. I don't really know too much about him. You know, I know more about Elon Musk. Yeah. You know, because he was... You should, you should actually get him on the show. Get him on the show, right? Yeah. I wonder what that guy cost. You should ask, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah, something that's been really hyped up and talked about the last couple of weeks is who would win in a fight, Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know too much about Mark. Sure, I know sure. he owns Facebook. Elon Musk, I feel like a lot of us know about because he was the richest guy in the world you know, several times. I'm not sure if he still is now. Um, he's done some pretty... Oh, he's up there. He's up <laughs> if there. he's not one, he's up there. Whenever you have a B in front of the number, <laughs> you, you have to be up there. Who's winning that fight, man? What do you, what do you think? Well, are okay. they actually fighting, first oh, of all? Okay, so are uh, we going with... I'm even... not sure if they're actually fighting, but are we going with who I think would win or who I want to win? Who do you think's going to... Who do you? Well, that's a good question. Who, who do you want to win and who do you think's going to win? Well, you know... I'd have Mark to, looks kind of scrappy, man. Well, for a, well, well, now I'd have to look up both their weights <laughs> and their heights. I'd start there, um, but um, as far as who I think would win, but um, I would say as far as who I would want to win, I'll go that direction. Probably Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Eh? I, pro I probably would go. I would go Elon Musk just because when I'm really weighing the options, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of more of a car guy, so. 
You know, I and I don't have a Tesla. No, nope. but um, shout out to Tesla. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Tesla. Um, so uh, you know, my lease is up next May. So uh, you know, I may get a, I may kind of dive into the electric a, world, All right? A new, yeah, a new Tesla. Shout out to Tesla. But um, yeah, yeah, I may. Uh, I'm, I'm, I didn't think they I were actually fighting. I thought people were joking. I, don't, I, I never thought that would be something serious. I thought, why, why I thought they, they were joking. I don't know. And the media just so kind of hyped think, it up. Like, I think they're actually like they always fighting. Do. I think they're actually fighting. They're actually fighting. Yeah, so I guess we'll see what happens. For charity. I don't know. For charity. It's got to be. It's got to be something. Yeah, I'm not really you know. sure. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> Listen, to get back to some some real estate stuff, some, some mortgage stuff, what do you think? I know we talked a little bit about it earlier um, in the episode. What do you think about the state of the industry now and kind of where it's been? I know it's been a little more challenging for all of us, you know, and sure. and, and certain people um, that haven't been in the business. Mm -hmm. And what do you think the future not holds for this business? I know that there's always going to be success in this business. That's why we're in it. But what do you think the next five years, you know, what do you, what do you think's in front of us? Okay. You know, a couple of years down I got a great post coming next week on that. But um, right now within the next five years, um, I would say that you're going to have a completely different market than what we're in right now. I don't think interest rates will hit historic lows for a very, very long time. But, um, you know, I, I got into the business before the financial crisis. Right. So when rates were approximately at 7%, yeah. you know, when people were refinancing and taking out a 7%, loving life, celebrating, having a party <laughs> because they lowered their double digit interest rate to a 7%. So I think we're gonna get back to the times of like, rates could be floating around that time. Who knows, it really does depend around economic data, but I think we'll be more the middle of the road. I think in five years, we'll be at that point to where we've already hit our boom yep. for us. Cause I think really in the next, I think really in the next 12 to like, I'd say 12 to 18 months, oh, it's a coming. It's a coming and then everyone's going to get back in the business and, you know, we're just going to go and have now our other record breaking years for us. Yeah. And um, I think that in the next five, it's going to kind of level out, you know, and you may find interest rates maybe around somewhere around a 5%, you know. But um, again, that's a crazy prediction where yeah, we're, where rates would be in five years, but where the market is going to be in five, year, five, five years, I think it'll be a comfortable market you know it's not going to be too crazy as far as like um volume being record-breaking figures but it's not going to be anywhere near a low like what we see today yeah no i agree that's a great way to put it i feel like a lot of people that refinanced or bought homes during covid times when rates were in the twos i mean there were 15 year loans in the ones i did a 15 year loan at 1.875%. Yeah, yeah. There were loans. 199, 1.875. Yeah, there were loans yeah. that were in the ones. Um, I just, I feel like people became so used to seeing that. So when rates went up to three, four, five, six percent again, it was, it was a shock for people. You know, you can't not buy a home. Um, you talked about it in, in several videos, affordability. You know, if you could afford the payment and the payment's comfortable for you, you can't look at the interest rate. Right. You know, you marry right. the home, you date the rate. You keep hearing that line. Absolutely. You know, this last year or so. Cliche, but That's spot it. on, yeah. 100% because if you just focus on the interest rate and you stand on the sidelines, you're never going to accomplish what you want to accomplish in life. You know, people have all these dreams of buying a home and buying real estate, but if you continue to put things on pause due to the market, you can't time the market. That's something I learned from a young age from people telling me that and making bad decisions financially and you know obviously now you're going through times like this in the business we all become smarter we all become smarter we have to dig a little deeper like i said earlier and um again to know that in the future again whether it's in six months and eight months and two years that there's going to be a tremendous opportunity you know, in this business, because rates are going to come down at some point. Um, that's what keeps, you know, the fire under me every day. You know, we help people accomplish their dreams of buying a home, refinancing a home um, and building, we, building we, wealth, building wealth. And our success is going to always, you know, come and go. And on the years where it's more challenging, you know, as long as we're, we're smart like we are, um, you know, we could always 
be ready for when that when that boom is going to come again. Absolutely. And we you know, know what it is? It's, like, it's going to come. Dean, I mean, everything, everything you said is really just is really just like refreshing to hear. Yeah. You know, and the footprints of success are already there. You just got to walk in them. That's it. You just got to step in them. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to do what successful people do. And when the business change, you have you have to change. The exactly. business changes, then it is your requirement as a professional and an expert in your field to adapt and change as well. And that's what successful people do. You know, so just like just like right five years ago, we were never doing this shit. No, I could we, never imagine. We were never those. doing this shit. No, I could never you know? imagine. It. I actually I actually remember in two thousand eighteen. I was single, enjoying life, um, and I remember, um, I remember sitting with um, a girl, a girl I was dating. Shit, this is gonna blow up my spot with all the girls I dated in 2018. But, um, but, but as far as I was, you know, uh, sitting with her on the couch, and we were watching something that it was like motivational related in 2018. And then I remember saying, like, you know, I should start dancing. And start doing like mortgage stuff and then spin it into like mortgage educational. She's like, that's a great idea. She's like, that's a phenomenal idea. She's like, you should definitely start that. That was 2018. You know, I, I went and I really, I, I got really serious about it in January of 2022. That was my goal. So then compliance and everything spring and then by summer I was rocking, but Think about if I would have really like. I wish I did it. If I had the I balls always, to start in 2018, and just the way the algorithms were with TikTok and Instagram, the algorithms were so much easier to grow at that at that point. And now, if you're not putting out content several yeah, times a day, they're strict. Yeah, of course they they're are. They're strict. You know, they reward the people that put the yeah. work and in. And then and then just it's posting. How life is. Right, and then it's posting on the same days, same times. So now Instagram knows you're coming. TikTok yep. knows you're coming. So it's just you know, it's just a matter of learning but um but yeah it's 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 just uh it's phenomenal just to see how we continue to adapt and change so it's like dean in five years you ask me what's going to be happening in the market let me ask this let me ask this to you in five years where do you see social media where do i see social in media? five years that's a that's a challenging question only because i didn't and I'll be completely honest, you know, going back five years ago, I was on social media, um, maybe because I was newer in the industry. Do you mean that you were on social media, but you really weren't on social media like that exactly. kind of thing? Exactly. Right. right. I was on social media for, you know, friends and, you know, family, whatever it was. But, you know, I was never on social media for business. Maybe it was because I had just got licensed and started in the business. So I didn't really realize that there would be a fit, you know, with social media and business and getting out there. Um, but I never even thought twice about getting out there on social media, you know, up until probably 2020, it became a thought, you know, hey, you know, there's some people that are starting to post some videos related to business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what what are we doing? And it probably took a, it, it took, took a year or two, you know, to really realize you know, this is something we have to do and to get my team on board, to get everybody on board, to realize that this is something that we need in our business um, wasn't a challenge, but it was something like we just talked about. You have to adapt, you know, to the times. Yeah. And to, to answer your question, where do I see it five years from now? I just feel like so right now, right, there's there's levels in business and in life, no matter what you do. There's people on social media right now that are doing phenomenally i don't even know that that's not even a word phenomenally <laughs> you made it a word good there's people that are phenomenal at what they do right now on social mm -hmm. media and there's people that are posting but maybe they're not posting enough or they're not getting out there as much as they should mm -hmm. um i just feel like five years from now there's gonna it's just levels you know so there's gonna be some people that are crushing it the people that aren't crushing it now are going to be crushing it that are putting the work in and the people that are doing well now are going to be doing even better. You know, I don't know how much more it can, how much more you can innovate social media. You know, what else can it offer? You know, you know besides, what? I, I don't know. You know what? To answer but your question, I really don't know what that kind of stuff five just, years from now. That kind of stuff just blows our mind, right? Yeah, It exactly. blows our mind, right? It blows my mind because I don't have an answer to where 
where is it going to be five years from now? Besides, I it's know that the like, people who the hell knows who's whoever's putting the work in Sky's is going to yep. see the reward of wherever it's going to yeah. be. And maybe that's, that's the maybe one your I boy Musk or uh, or Mark, you know, maybe maybe they'll uh, they'll be uh, at the top of the game still. Yeah, you, so. ne- you never know. But I'm excited for what the future holds them. and yeah. to be to be in the mix and in the game now. Um, you know, it makes me happy. Yeah, um, that I could help not only my team, my referral partners, and help the people around me because now this is what we do. You I know, think it's, it's a part important of our business too, like part of our collaborations. Lives. Exactly. We, really, yeah. we haven't really spoken about that, but once you go and you get with the program, it was always a real estate agent yourself. thing. Yeah, we never collab. That wasn't our business. Just, that wasn't our just thing. collaborations. It's so important for you to get in front of someone else's audience. So yeah, I don't care if that person has, you know, five hundred followers. It is so important to get in front of those 500 followers because something that's also very intriguing too is you'll see sometimes people with 500 followers post something and they'll average 100 likes. Yeah, it's unbelievable. 100 likes. Right. When you could have 5,000 followers get and average <laughs> 40 likes. Yeah. You know, so, it, so again, it depends on the person. It depends on, you know, their particular audience, which you just don't know, you know, and you never know when that next deal you know, is, is coming from, I'll just, I'll just tell you as far as, um, a lady and she actually went on my Facebook because I used to do a few things on Facebook and that's how she found me. I was going to the Bahamas in, this was June of 2019. So I'm with my friend and I'm on the plane in the morning and I got my encompass and I'm going and I'm crunching this and crunching that. And then I'm like, I, I have social security numbers and I'm trying to calculate like numbers. Was that the stuff. company trip? Because was, I was there too. I think. No, that oh, was no. in September oh, okay. to, right. to Bahamas. So I went to the Bahamas with my friend. We just yeah. did a, a boys yeah. trip. So right. I'm sitting there and I'm like, is this lady? Like, is she like looking at the social? Is she looking at the names <laughs> and stuff? And there was a lady sitting. And then she goes and then the plane starts to take off. And then she goes and she, she, goes and she grabs my hand. And then she's like, just so you know, I have a huge fear of flying. So just, you know, and her husband was sitting next to me over like on the opposite side of the aisle i had a i had a aisle seat so then she's like just so you know blah, blah, blah. i said yeah it's okay it's okay don't worry we're gonna get through this it's okay so she's like holding my wrist like this the whole time and then we're going and i'm there i'm typing and she's there it's um she's in the middle it's me and then my buddy has the window seat so then she goes and she turns and she's like um can i can i just ask you it's about 30 minutes now. She's like, what do you do? So I tell her I'm a mortgage banker. Then my buddy next to her starts going, oh, he's a mortgage banker. Oh, he's great. He's this, he's that. He starts like selling the shit out of me, right? So I'm like, thanks, Danny. Thanks, Danny. She's like, he must be a good friend. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. he's good. So I'm going, I'm typing. So then next thing you know, she starts picking my brain on mortgage questions. She's like, you know, I just went through a divorce. Um, I own a house in Westchester. So we start going through questions and then she's like, you know, I have to buy out my husband, whatever, whatever. So I start giving her advice and everything. And next thing you know, we go and we're talking and uh, we're staying at the same resort. <laughs> so now we go out and um, it's like, hi, Matt. hi, bye at like the resort. I see her again. Hi, bye. Next thing you know, on our last night, we go out to a club. I run into this lady who's you know she was like 20 years older than me i run into her and her husband at the same club so then she's like what's your info what's your name again blah 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 i tell her my name right she goes i never see her again probably it was probably about two or three weeks later she's like oh yeah i remembered your name i put it in my phone i went on facebook and i found you so then she went hit me up Close the refi a month later. Wow. So it's like you never know when the business is going to... That's gonna, awesome. On a plane. Gonna, on a plane. That's awesome. Got her on a plane. Wow. You know, so... And I closed her over at Meadowbrook. Nice. But, but yeah, so That's it was... Awesome. Uh, you know, it was, it's, it's... That's social it's media, man. Listen, That's social media. And yeah. that wasn't me even really, like, using it, you know? Like, using it in a real professional manner and as a lead gen platform. That was me just using it just to be there and have a presence and, like, you know, take pictures with athletes, meet and greets, seminars, but... I wasn't really using it like I was using it now. And boy, if I was using that in 2018, this would be a whole nother conversation. Yeah, so, no, I, but I it's just you. all about I learning, feel, learning and growing and keeping up. I feel the same keeping way. Up with it. Yep. I feel the same way. Listen, I, you know, we talked about some great stuff today. I know we said, where do we think the, the market's going to be in five years? Where do you, where do you see your business? 
you know, five years down the line. In five years? Yeah, in five, five years. years down the line? What do you see your business in five years down the line? I mean, at that point, you know, as far as with me working on growing my real estate portfolio now with my rental and stuff like that, you know, I see, uh, I see having a nice, see. a nice portfolio, you know, having multiple properties. You know, the question is, you know, do I continue to build in New York? Do I go, do I go outside of New York? So that's what I see for myself as far as when it comes to real estate wise, yeah. personally. And then when it, when it comes to the, the business, you know, um, I don't want to grow a big team. It's just not the goal. I like to mentor, which is great. Yeah. I love to mentor. I love to coach, you know, um, and as far as just having a few individuals who are really hungry, maybe, you know, one or two seasoned people, one or two newer people, and that's it. Yeah. And just let everybody grow. Let everybody eat. You know, they make more, I make less, you know, and that, that, that's just kind of the well, business small, model. Small goes big in our business. Yeah, that's you know, kind of the business small, model small big. to where I seen people in our business who solely rely on people under them. Yeah. And there's only a few who can pull it off in yeah. a down market. Yeah. The majority of people who just rely on making money on others then have to get back to basics and then go and pound the pavement like we used to do yeah, in order to start originating. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that I don't have to rely on just the team because like, like you said, especially yeah. in a down or challenging market, it's tough to rely on other people and you, you know, for your livelihood. And you lead by example. You lead the team yeah. in your numbers. So you do it by, you know, let me show you how to do this, yeah. you know, and kind of just put the roadmap on if you want to make numbers like this, this is this is exactly what you have to do. So, yeah. you know, it's good because you set the pace, you set the tone, uh, and you show it in your performance. So, you know, and, and, and also, too, listen, that motivates all of us. If you're making money, I love to see you making money. Vice closing versa. tons of loans, you know. It's, I've it's, never been a person that when you see people that are successful, because we, we've all been successful, we've all had challenging months, you know, I want everybody to do better than me always. Yep. That's just always how I've been. Um, to see other people thrive and achieve success is something that that's why I do this every day. Um, so it's nice to see people, especially even in this market that we work with and in, in our environment, you know, see success still. Sure. So, stay um, humble. Stay humble. Yeah, miss, listen, man, I, I really appreciate you taking the, the time to sit down today. Thank you, brother. I know, uh, had a great time. Yeah, I know. It's, me too, man. I had a great time. I know at some point in the future we'll do this yeah. again. Now maybe, we got maybe, some content. Uh, maybe on the other on the other series. You got to come on yeah. the After Hours series. There we go. There we go. Talk about some more personal stuff, some, All right. some life stuff. Maybe but, we uh, do something, maybe even me, you, and a guy they call Giovanni, you know, do a little, 